Hello and welcome to Mystery Made Known, content about all things Jesus and the Gospel. In this video, we'll have a look at the whole human problem of the busy mind and how it hinders us from being present ourselves to the presence of God. If you were to choose one phrase to describe our culture, I wonder what you'd say. There's probably many words and phrases that would in some way suit, but one that jumps immediately to my mind is busy. We live in a very busy culture. All you have to do for evidence is just look at the cities, the great densities of human population, 24 hour activity in all sorts of areas of life transport and commerce, entertainment, recreation, hospitality. I mean, the reputation that New York City has as the city that never sleeps, that's probably true of every large city, and not just in the so-called Western culture, but worldwide. We have busyness wherever there is a great gathering of human beings with all of the resources and facilities that this generates. But where there is a busy life, you'll most certainly find there is a busy mind. Of course, busyness is not in itself a bad thing. Nothing would get done without human activity. We wouldn't be able to enjoy the improvements that progress provides or the help in times of crisis that human ingenuity and effort achieves. But unregulated busyness can be as destructive as constructive. It can burn a person out. And I'm not just talking about physical activity. The busy mind is just as much a threat to human well-being as too much physical activity. We know that true human health and well-being involves the mind as well as the body. And I'd say we need to add spiritual health into the mix as well. All three are inextricably linked. The problem for us is that our culture is pretty good at working around the whole health of the body thing, but we don't seem to be as competent in the area of mind and spirit. One verse in the Bible kicks us off in the right direction here. In a song that seems to be grounded in the context of great trouble and fear, most probably the threat of or presence of war, in the song we get this line. Be still and know that I am God. The whole of the song, which is Psalm 46, seems to be leading up to this line, up to this moment that brings the listener up short, maybe even rebukes the listener into stillness and silence. Some interpret the being still as stop fighting, but it's probably more legitimate to translate the verse as God saying, stop all your striving and pay attention to me, the reality of who I am to my presence and power. The whole of the psalm is the songwriter speaking, but here, alone in the whole of the psalm, it is God's voice. This seems to be the same sort of situation we find in the book of Job, when after all of Job's debating about God with his mates, God finally turns up, and all Job can do is put his hand over his mouth and become silent, realising that his perspective on his circumstances and everything, actually, were way off the mark. He became present and aware of God's presence, and this changed his view on everything. He was literally shocked into being present for the living God's presence. So, be still and know that I am God. Let's look at this a little deeper. So here to know who God is involves being still in the sense of stop any striving, or to put it the other way around, the human striving, activity, busyness that's in question prevents the awareness of the reality of God. 
And this stilling ourselves is certainly not just from a physical activity point of view, but critically, crucially, the stilling ourselves from the thought patterns, the thinking that carries our attention away from an awareness of God's presence. For our purposes, we might say this verse says, stop the busyness of body, mind and spirit that hinders and even prevents any attention being given to God's very real presence and power. In short, because God is present with us in the moment, we are to become present ourselves, to actively and intentionally change our perspective and our comprehension of our situation and give full attention to God's presence, to focus body, mind and spirit on the present and not allow perpetual concerns with the past or the future to lead us astray. Why? Because it's only in the present moment that God engages with each of us. Yes, of course God was with us in the past and will be with us in the future. That's a done deal. But the thing that counts, what really matters for living out life in all of its fullness, is full attention to his presence with us in the here and now. Let's check out something Jesus has to say about this. Jesus teaches the same point, this biblical reality, from a slightly different angle. In what is known as the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus tells people not to worry about the future of their life in terms of getting food and clothing. He points to the natural world as evidence of God's timely provision for his creatures. Jesus then points out that fretting over the future is a common, if not normal, human condition. In contrast, Jesus says this, but seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So, Jesus clearly teaches that the priority each day is to first give attention to God, his kingdom, presence and goodness. Jesus says that this will ensure everything else goes as it should. He basically says, focus on the here and now. That's what counts the most at any moment. That is where you will find God the Father and all you need will follow. Now, Jesus is not saying don't give any thought at all to the past or to the future. I mean, elsewhere, he clearly talks about remembering and learning from the past and strongly warns for the need to prepare for the future, but not at any expense to full attention to the present. And so he reveals one of our greatest hindrances to comprehending and experiencing the life that he, that Jesus, has made available. The hindrance is absence instead of presence. Though we might be physically present to God, we are often mentally and so spiritually absent. So let's unpack this a little more. So one of our greatest hindrances to comprehending and experiencing the life that Jesus has made available is being absent from God's presence. Let me explain what I mean by this. These passages, and indeed many more like them in the Bible, reveal the human tendency to be driven away from full attention to the present. This becomes crystal clear when you just try and focus your mind exclusively on the present. Before long, all sorts of distracting thoughts begin to take control and distract us. These thoughts are almost always either thinking about something that relates to the past or something that relates to the future. It may be just simple, unproductive daydreaming, but it can so often be the thought processes that are responsible for poor mental health and lead to poor physical health as well. We're talking about perpetual, 
negative pessimistic thought patterns. In terms of the past, it might be concern or regret or even longing for things of the past. In terms of the future, it's often perpetual negative speculation about what the future may hold. In both cases, there is a mental disconnection with the present, and so in many cases, a disconnection from reality itself. Such thinking erodes and undermines faith in Jesus. It's near impossible to experience God's will for us, the rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances, that of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Why? Because the type of life characterized by rejoicing, praying, thanksgiving is grounded in being present to God's presence. So what are we to do about all this? So how do we become present to the moment? How do we answer this gospel call to be present? Well, it requires a new way of navigating through the day, a new way that may require considerable practice. It's the transformation the Apostle Paul talks about through the renewal of the mind, the transformation that then discerns God's will and way for us. And we're all capable of it. This alertness to the present, well, it's a bit like what we experience when the door slams or we hear a glass being dropped off in the distance somewhere. You know, those things that shock us into the present, moments that capture our full attention, even kicking in our fight or flight reflex. This is the life of attention Jesus modelled when he said he was doing only what he saw the Father doing. This implies Jesus scanning his situation, surveying his circumstances, seeking and sensing God's presence and guidance. Examples of this are everywhere when you look for it, like the time Jesus was alert to the single touch of one person among many in a pressing crowd, the single touch of a woman that brought her complete healing. Another example is when Jesus stops as he's walking along at the foot of a tree and looks up at a man called Zacchaeus and says, I must come to your house today. This is what is described as keeping in step with the Holy Spirit of God. So how is it achieved? Well, it is achieved through familiarising ourselves with seeking, sensing and giving attention to God's presence. The daily discipline of personal, quiet contemplation and prayer. The place that Jesus describes when teaching his disciples to pray in the secret place. The principle Jesus modelled himself in his regular, extended times of withdrawing from the world in order to pray. It will include intercession, praise and thanksgiving, but all of which emerge from this necessary foundation of being still, stilling our souls and knowing God's presence. This is a massive issue, and sadly we live in a culture that doesn't really help us much at all. Even our Christian traditions tend to favour a lot of busyness and activity over stillness. In fact, I suggest being present was never needed more than now in a culture that is facing ever-growing issues of mental health and well-being. This could be the simplest and most powerful way to witness to the reality of Jesus in our time, by simply becoming competent in being present to the presence of God and letting the life this produces show everybody around us the reality of Jesus in us. As I've said before, if the way we practice our faith in Jesus doesn't produce the character and life of Jesus in us, we need to change the way we do things so that it does. And I think that that all begins with taming our busy minds. The wonderful news is that if we're serious about this, you and I can achieve it. It is the will of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit to dwell within us, and provision has been made. This reality is entirely possible for you and me. So I pray that you will find and establish the time to develop your own awareness of how your thought processes work. I pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit you will be able to tame your busy mind. I pray that on a daily basis you will become more and more aware of the presence of God in and around you. 
that you will not only first seek his kingdom and righteousness, but that you will find it and live life within it. I pray that you will indeed become still and know that he is God. I pray that you will be able to be present.